Welcome back. All right, so another news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Wednesday, February the 15th. Starting off with good news for Toronto. Uh, Austin Matthews cleared. He will be returning to their lineup tomorrow. And so for Toronto, that'll help with the attack. They did well enough while he was out. Uh, and they're focusing on bouncing back from that Saturday night uh, loss against Columbus. Uh, and yeah, having Matthews back will definitely help with that. That means everybody slots into the regular spots in the lineup and you go back to having the kind of attack you expect to. Uh, Vancouver, the news has come out that uh, Silovs is going to make his debut tonight. Oh man, against the Rangers. You know, this this could be ugly. I really hope it's not. I mean, the last couple of days we've seen Ottawa with Mandalese, Sogard both having really good debuts. I would love to see a good debut for a Vancouver goaltender but it's against the Rangers. So Delia will be the backup. The good news too is that Demko, full participant in practice, he is very close. Uh, he was only supposed to be out four to six weeks. It's been 10. So definitely a longer process of him coming back than it was supposed to be. Uh, he could start on the 21st against Nashville. That's the, the date that he figures he can, he can play. Uh, he expects to be the backup on Saturday for the Vancouver Canucks. So basically saying it's up to the coach on when he plays. So there you go, Vancouver's goaltending um, is about to get a little bit stronger here, and it looks like Dealey is going to end up being the backup for Demko when Demko's good to go. Uh, so with trade deadline season upon us and all that fun stuff and only a couple of weeks out, uh, Evander Kane was asked about all the noise. Of course, the Oilers right now are being tied a lot to Carlson. And the funny thing is, it feels like they're, they're, I think there's some smoke there. I think the team has definitely had discussions with Carlson, but... Boy, there's so much media talk about this that when Carlson doesn't go to the Oilers, people are going to be disappointed. And and I I, I just look at it from a financial standpoint and say, I, I can't see it. I just can't see it. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I've also seen people saying, well, you know, if you get rid of the salary cap, you'll see more trades. Yeah, the NHL wiped out an entire year to get a salary cap. There's no way in Hades they're going to give up that salary cap. There's just what... Whether you agree with it or you don't, the NHL salary cap is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Um, they, they fought tooth and nail to get it. Like I said, they wiped out an entire year of hockey just to get that salary cap. And it was honestly kind of a surprise when the NHLPA capitulated and gave them the salary cap. And uh, heads rolled at the NHLPA after that went through. But at any rate, Evander Kane being asked about the trade deadline season... Basically saying there's a lot of BS that's out there. Uh, there's always going to be rumors just created for entertainment. And I think that's what we see. Now, there's times as, where, as well where uh, there's the speculation of, let's just let's say Patrick Kane to the Rangers. Now, with Tarasenko going to the Rangers, it's less likely Patrick Kane goes there. But you can see where somebody might say, oh, you know, Kane might want to go to the Rangers. Well, yeah, Kane really likes playing with Panarin. Oh, hey, wouldn't it be fun if... And then it spins from there. So you'll see it go from one to another to another, and it morphs. And eventually it becomes not just, well, they're in on it, becomes we're expecting him to get. So coming back to the Oilers and what Kane's saying here, and thinking about the Eric Carlson bit, at this stage, if Carlson got traded somewhere else, there would be those who would be disappointed. Uh, for the Oilers, it, it would make a lot of sense for them to pick up Carlson just for what it would do to, to their team's explosive offense. Uh, defensively, he has his deficiencies, but they're not as as egregious, I don't think, this year as they've been in other years. But at any rate, um, I, I do think there's a lot that's being said for entertainment at this point. Um, I've I've learned over the years never to be entertaining. So that's, that's always my goal. Wake up, be boring, uh, go to bed. Uh, but at any rate, kidding aside and all that, uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of things I see out there that I say, okay, there's there's some grounding here, in fact, and then there's some some fantasy discussion that happens from there. And, yeah, it's because there's not very many trades in the NHL. Getting rid of the salary cap would just create so many headaches. And, again, I understand people wanting to get rid of it. I know whenever I play the NHL games on the PlayStation, which I haven't done in a couple of years, I always turn off the salary cap. I always think it's more fun without the cap. I'm like, all right, I don't want to have restraints on my team. I don't care for losing money. I'm not the owner. But at any rate... Uh, yeah, that's what we're seeing right now is, I think, a lot of discussions that probably won't end up being fruitful in the end. And always remember, there are surprises that take place on trade deadline day. Guys who get traded, we do not expect. 
Uh, so Chicago making some moves today. They've moved Tenorti, Taves, and Staylock to the IR. It's interesting with Staylock. Apparently it's something to do with his ability to track the puck. So it's something with his eyes where he's, he's having trouble. And they said that it's something that if it was just regular person, wouldn't be considered a big deal. Uh, it definitely wouldn't stop you from doing your job or anything. But for a National Hockey League goaltender, uh, it's an issue that's keeping him out of the lineup at this point. They've called up Gutman, who's supposed to play tonight. Sini, uh, who I believe's going into the lineup tonight as well. And Phillips, uh, all been recalled by the team. Taves is just out with illness, so it's a retroactive IR. He's not expected to be on it for long. It will not affect whether or not he gets traded. But uh, yeah, Chicago, uh, a lot of moves here. I, I feel bad for Tenorti going on to IR because he just came off of it. And Tenorti's had a rough year. Had a really strong start to his time with Chicago, and it's just kind of been derailed. Um, the, the good news, I would think, is that Chicago being in a rebuild anyways, I would think Tenorti sticks with the team next year too. Uh, Detroit news. Uh, Raymond has been placed on IR, so they've called up Verana, and Verana returns to the lineup tonight, and we'll find out how it goes. Uh, Jacob Verana, his numbers in Grand Rapids got better. Uh, he was being sat out, of course, healthy scratch, and a lot of discussions over how he needed to improve his game, and it looks like he has. So he's getting another chance with the Wings, probably because Raymond's got hurt. Uh, but it, what that means with Raymond getting hurt is there's going to be some prime minutes there too. So we'll see how Verena does tonight. I do hope the best for him and his return to the National Hockey League. Uh, Daryl Sutter, uh, kind of uh, actually giving information to the press today uh, in that he was asked about the goaltending situation. And this is a, a, a discussion of every single recap video I've done for a while is Vladar and Markstrom. And he is leaning towards giving them equal time. Now, it's interesting to say equal time because it doesn't mean that they're going to play against the same quality of opponents. I get the feeling that the tougher opponents will probably end up being faced by Vladar and Markstrom will probably get the games against the lesser opponents until he gets his confidence back. I still think that if this team's going to go anywhere in the playoffs, they need both goaltenders to be playing well going into said playoffs. And of course, for Calgary right now, uh, they're really, really close to actually missing the playoffs, so they need to have their goaltending in order. Uh, Sutter cannot afford to just keep giving games to Markstrom, hoping he turns it around. So Vladar and Markstrom are supposed to split the net. We'll see what that looks like if it's a one-to-one -one split or if Vladar gets slightly more games than does Markstrom. Uh, Eric Johnson's out indefinitely for the Colorado Avalanche because the Avs have to get a lot of injuries. This is just the way things work. has been this way for a long time. Uh, it's a lower body injury for Johnson. So I, 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 the, the thing with Colorado is they do have a lot of depth. We've seen that with the injuries that they've, they've taken. That being said, they're already without McCarr. They're already without Manson. Now they're without Johnson. It, it does start to add up. So for Colorado, uh, hopefully they start getting guys back sooner rather than later. McCarr, I don't think, is supposed to be out that long. But this is the second time he hasn't been supposed to be out that long. So... Yeah, those words all make sense together. Sure. Um, St. Louis news coming out of last night's game. So Saad got hurt. He won't play tomorrow. It's an upper body injury. Krug got hurt. No word yet on whether or not Krug's going to play. It's a lower body injury for him. Uh, both are considered day-to-day, -day -day, so they're not considered to be major injuries. Uh, but they're going to miss them in St. Louis. Of course, St. Louis right now um, on, the, on the edge when it comes to potentially being in the playoff hunt. But I think for most Blues fans, they've kind of resigned themselves to the fact this team doesn't make the playoffs. And so we'll see what happens at the deadline. But both Krug and Saad should be staying with St. Louis long term. And I want to finish out with uh, something that should have been on the news board uh, yesterday or this morning. So I've got it on the board now. And that is the Jack Eye is out indefinitely. It's an upper body, body injury for him for Montreal. Arbor Jack Eye has been quite the story for Montreal. He's been absolutely fantastic. So hopefully uh, he's able to come back before the season's over. But if he doesn't, he has definitely carved out a space in that lineup for himself. And he's been great. He's been very enjoyable to watch. He's one of the most entertaining players to watch in the league. So good on Jack Eye for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with Montreal's blue line. Although they're getting a lot of goals from the blue line lately. So yeah, things are going all right for Montreal. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.